Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm gonna to be doing these amazing soap cupcakes and they were inspired by Sophia recreating my 2016 project where I made soap cupcakes and I loved the personal spin she put on it. So I'm gonna keep that inspiration ball rolling and redo that entire video with my own little inspiration based on her inspiration. So when I watched the video, I have to say, I was holding my breath the entire time. She did such an amazing job, which is, well, it speaks to her natural talents and her persistence because she's not really a, a, an experienced soap maker. And this recipe, well, honestly, there's so many steps. It's designed for experienced soap makers and she did such an incredible job, but she also put her own spin on it. So she did this really cool kind of bats and moons and kind of celestial inspired concept. And so we didn't have any little bats, but we do have some of the really cool brambleberry silicone molds. And so I went ahead and did stars and moons and changed up the colors and used moon child fragrance for this. But if you watched her video, you notice that this takes some prep work. So we are gonna go through all of the steps for prep work. And also another thing to keep in mind is though this is an intermediate or advanced recipe, it's totally doable because there's no complicated swirls and there's no complicated design elements. It's just so many steps that that makes it an intermediate recipe. Now, if you've never made soap before and you're looking at this and going, well, that's really great for her, but I'm not into that. I would like to get a few, few new recipes under my belt before I did that. Well, the first four episodes of Soap Queen TV have beginner cold process recipes, so stop and watch them here, or any of my books also have beginner cold process soap making recipes. So since I designed this recipe in 2016, I've actually changed things up just a little bit. Now the 2016 recipe concept still holds on how to make the frosting, where you make your oils ahead of time, you put them in the freezer, you cool them down, or I've kind of streamlined the process since then. What I'm gonna be showing you today is the streamlined process where we make a big batch of soap ahead of time, we divide the batch, and then that second batch, we just allow to harden and harden and harden until we're able to get frosting. Now, the thing you'll notice though is this new recipe technique, you can't get quite as high frosting peaks, but it is so much faster and it shaves a whole day off of prep time, so I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide which one you want to do. And if you're like, well, where is this 2016 video? Where is Sophia's video? I'm gonna link to them right below so you can watch it all. And then show me your cupcakes. When you guys are done with this project, please hashtag them Bramble On so I can see what you create. Would also love to know what technique you did, 2016 versus circa today. So let's just get started with the embeds. And so the embeds are using melt and pour soap base. And melt and pour soap base is a pre-made soap base that, well, you just melt in the microwave, you pour, and then it's ready to use right away. Unlike cold process soap, there's no curing or drying time. These embeds are made using the Brambleberry silicone embeds. And so these are really cool silicone molds where they just open beautifully like this, and then they have a channel that you just really to kind of tightly press to make sure it's together. And then you have this really beautiful, long cylindrical uh, bar of soap that you can use for embedding. Or in this case, we're going to be kind of chopping it into smaller pieces in order to make cupcake toppings. One of the keys about making this and having your kind of embeds in the open air is that you really want to use like cold process soap melt and pour base or low sweat glycerin melt and pour base. So what does that even mean? Well, glycerin melt and pour soap has added glycerin added to it so it melts down evenly and stays clear. What's glycerin? Glycerin is a humectant that draws moisture to the skin or in this case, your soap. So what happens if you put kind of plain melt and pour soap on top of your soapy cupcake? It'll draw moisture to it, which is sweaty. And so it makes something called glycerin dew. So if you'd like to avoid having glycerin dew, which kind of looks like, well, dew drops on beautiful grass in the morning, uh, use light cold process, low sweat melt and pour soap. So I have my melt and pour soap already chopped up. That's one of the keys. You wanna make sure you have little kind of one inch by one inch cubes, and then you melt it down in the microwave in 30 second bursts. Now that the soap is fully melted, I'm just gonna split it into two. And the reason for that is I've got two different colors going. And so my Queen's Purple Mica is going to make my moon, and the Brambleberry Gold Sparkle Mica is going to make my beautiful stars. Usage rate is kind of a what you see is what you get, and I'm gonna, do, but I'm gonna start with just about point, uh, one eighth of a teaspoon, so just an eighth of a teaspoon for both, and 
One thing you'll notice with the light cold process low sweat uh, melt and pour soap is it does harden up just a little bit faster than the kind of traditional uh, melt and pour soap that has the liquid glycerin in it, which makes a lot of sense, right? A little bit less moisture, hardens up a, a little bit faster. But you can still work quickly to, make, to mix these in. And if you do end up with any sort of bubbles, you're all, always welcome to just do a little spritz of rubbing alcohol right on the top so the bubbles go poof and go away. Now that my color is fully mixed in, it's time to pour into my mold. So again, make sure that your molds are fully put together. I've had, <laughs> I've had a couple oopses where I've had soap go because I didn't make sure on that. And then find a tall container just like this. Go ahead and put your silica mold into the tall container like this, pour into it, and then you're done. So like a vase or anything like that works for this. And you'll notice it doesn't go all the way to the top. That's because you just don't need that many embeds and we didn't want to waste any of your soap. I only have one of these tall containers, so I'm going to move this out of the way and then I'm going to carefully pour into my moon mold. And then once I've carefully poured into my moon mold, I'm just going to prop this back on behind me, kind of against the, the wall and let it sit there for just a couple hours. And once it's hardened, it's ready to pull apart and ready to use. So you can do this step on the same day you make your soap cupcakes. So I made these ahead of time, of course. So that way you could see um, just kind of how easy these were to come apart. And you just pull them apart. And then once these come apart, every so often, you'll get just a little bit of kind of, woo, just a little bit of kind of uh, bleed through or bleed over like this. And so what you do with these, so you just take a little knife and you run it around the sides, or you can sometimes even just smooth it off with your fingers or fingernails. So that way you have a really even embed. Once your embeds are out, take a non serrated knife and just gently kind of cut down. And when you're cutting down, cut straight down and notice I turned mine over. So that way the moon wasn't down because I wanted to preserve that moon shape because you can end up really kind of flattening your moon if you don't turn it over into this sort of half moon smiley shape. And then do the same for your gold stars. Just make sure you've cleaned up the edges kind of so that way there's, there's no uh, excess soap that's going to mar the look and shape in, of your stars and cut straight down using a non serrated knife. So now it's time to make our cold process soap. I am using Brambleberry Quick Mix and Brambleberry Quick Mix comes in these really cool bags for, for um, most of the sizes. And the way it works is, well, it's already measured out, perfectly designed, perfectly balanced cold process soap recipe. So these are all the oils you need. This particular recipe uses a 38 ounces of our basic quick mix. And so you'll want to buy the 54 ounce size, for example, if you're making this recipe, really easy. You just kind of give it a shake. And then if it's, say you've got a little bit of solid in the bottom, you can toss this whole thing in the microwave because it's a heat safe bag. So before we get started with cold process soap, obviously we always suit up for safety. So that means children and pets are in the other room. You have a solid 45 minutes to one hour to work uninterrupted, well ventilated area. So you're not breathing any live fumes. Um, and also of course, gloves, eye protection, long sleeve shirt, closed toed shoes and long pants. Lie burns are absolutely no fun. So we want to protect us and you from them. So before we get started, just a little bit more prep. This is titanium dioxide that I am dispersing in lightweight oil to make sure that there's just no clumps in it. And then this is our queen's purple mica, which I love the brightness of this color. It's fantastic. Also just dispersing that in a little lightweight oil. And then finally, I'm going to measure out my fragrance. And my fragrance that I'm using today is the Moonchild from Brambleberry.com. And I really like this fragrance. This fragrance is from the Brambleberry Celestial uh, Collection. And I think it's very heavy with tea notes, but it's also got some white rose and some bergamot in there and is really lovely and easy to work with. And also for this recipe, I think it matches the colors really well. And whenever we work with fragrance, we always work by weight. So I'm just going to pre-measure my amounts and have exactly two ounces here for this recipe. And then now that my fragrance is measured out and my colorants are fully mixed, it's time to make soap. And I'm just going to pour my lye water, which by the way, does have sodium lactate in it. I love to use sodium lactate every single time I make soap. It 
basically makes for a harder bar of soap that is slightly more shiny and in silicone molds, I find it works wonders for helping to release the soap early. Now that I have a really, kind of this is a solid thin to just starting to become medium trace, I'm gonna split off some of this to turn into, so that this becomes my frosting and then I have enough soap to make my base. Now go ahead and set this larger amount off to the side. This is going to be our frosting. To this 21 ounces of soap, go ahead and add a full tablespoon and a half of the pre-mixed Queen's Purple Mica. We really are going for a very strong, gorgeous, vibrant, colorful base here. Add just about half of your fragrance, which is gonna be right about one ounce of your Moonchild fragrance. And now that this has hit a nice kind of mm, medium trace, but still very pourable, go ahead and pour your base. And if you're lucky enough, you can go ahead and kind of mound it from the top in the middle here. And what I find is that helps us with the frosting in the next step, because you kind of have a little bit of extra sort of uh, well, you have a little bit of a, a hat there to work from when you do start to frost. Now that this is all filled up, it's time to set these aside and also check on our frosting situation. I'm just gonna add one and a half tablespoons of this fully dispersed Queen's Purple. And it's also going to take a full tablespoon of our titanium dioxide because we're going for a kind of similar looks but a different hue or a different shade. And then I'm going to add the rest of my fragrance. And I'm just gonna really quickly sort of, um, I'm gonna just stick blend all this in, because remember we want this to be thick because it has to turn into frosting. So this consistency isn't quite ready to frost and I kind of know it because like that is that that plop wee that's not going to hold any sort of kind of shapes. Um, however, I do find it a little bit easier to kind of fill my frosting bag when it's a little bit more kind of gloopy. So what I like to do is fill my frosting bag and then just set my frosting bag in like a cup or something like that. So I'm going to do that now. So I am just gonna kind of glop this in. And again, you know, if, you're, if your frosting is a little bit harder, you may wanna spoon it. Um, I actually am struggling a little to glop, so I'm gonna switch to a spoon. But this is definitely not hard enough to frost yet. So keep that in mind. I'm just getting it in here like this because it'll be easier to fill it up higher. So now I'm probably gonna wait another probably solid five minutes. So this soap is pretty, I think it has a good consistency. So I'm just gonna do some kind of tests. And the way you make really tall frosting is you actually give yourself just kind of a middle point to frost around. And so this is a really good way to test the consistency. And I will say this consistency is lovely. One of the keys for frosting is you squeeze with your left hand if you're right-handed, and you try and squeeze the top from the top down so you don't end up with soap shooting out the top. And so you kind of squeeze pretty hard. And so these are looking fantastic. And you might notice that this is a totally different tip than I was using earlier. And that's because I, honestly, I tried them both ways and I kind of liked it this way, but I wanted you to see what happens when you use this tip too. So now that these are clearly holding their shape, I'm just gonna go ahead and start frosting these. So remember with the frosting, you just kind of go nice and slow, unless you actually are a cake decorator or have any real skill at this, let the frosting tip be the thing that makes you look good. So you're, what you're going for is height. And it's kind of funny, because in Sophia's video, she was like, you know, these feel a little weird to shower with, or, to, to, or she actually was using it when she was washing her hands. And I, in preparation for this video, just used a full soap cupcake for the last kind of um, couple of weeks in my shower. And I will say, once you kind of get past that initial like P 
peak at the top of the frosting, the, it soaps up kind of like any sort of round soap. In this case, so what I'm noticing is that I'm running out of my soap frosting, and so there's gonna be a little bit of repair work that I do once I refill this bag, because that's looking a little droopy. So now it's time to refill the bag, and this is where you kind of get a little messy. You can either use a second bag, or since I'm wearing gloves, I'm honestly just gonna open this up and try and refill it and see how well I do. This is refilled. A little messier now, you guys, coming out the top. It's the way it is, that's why we wear gloves. Let me see if I can repair this guy from earlier, and if not, you guys, you know what you can do? You can literally just scoop the entire frosting off and start again, and I will say it looks pretty bad. I might do that again, but first I'm gonna get these guys finished. What's kind of funny is as you are really working your way through the frosting, <laughs> you'll notice that the higher the frosting is on these guys that are on the side, the harder it is to get your kind of arms in between to get this frosting looking really good. So I am just gonna finish on these ones and then I'm gonna tackle what I'm gonna do with this situation, which is again, it's just kind of gross. Okay, wish me luck. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna plop it right back in my bag and I'm gonna do the whole thing over. So now I have my frosting, I've got the middle built up, and then you frost around slowly and evenly, and you just keep working your way up that middle peak, kind of like going on the Magic Mountain ride at Disney. So here we are, that is much better. Yes, feeling really good about that. Um, I have a tiny little frosting guy here. I'm actually gonna just let him kind of be a eh, little less than, a little tinier, more flat. And that way I can get to showing you the final placement of our embeds and our sparkles and all the fun stuff. You guys, I have to say, I'm not like feeling like super sold on my piping work, but nothing a little glitter is not gonna fix and a little bit of embeds. So here we have the, um, the Eco Glitter, the Rainbow Eco Glitter from Brambleberry. And Eco Glitter meaning it is biodegradable so it won't harm streams or fish. And then also the wonderful Snowflake Sparkle Mica. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna tap a little bit into our sifter here and then we're just gonna tap that on top of the frosting. And the reason we're doing it in the sifter is it helps to diffuse, diffuse? It helps to diffuse all of the kind of glitter from going just kind of in globs or the sparkle from going in globs. And so now I'm getting a really beautiful fine dusting of this sparkle all over my frosting. It's making it look very magical, very celestial. And then I'm just gonna pour the rest of this in here. Done with that. Put that to the side. And then with your fingers, just take your eco glitter and just sprinkle on the top. Sprinkle on the top. It's really lovely and it shimmers and it shines and I love the look of it. It really just captures all the light facets. And I'm already feeling better about my frosting here. And then once you're done with that, it's time to place the embeds. And this is where your artisticness can kind of really shine and come out. You can place them however you want. I personally found that I liked the moon kind of being on the, the kind of top, a little bit off to the side because I really like that peak being there. And a couple stars, just shove them in there. Remember, this is still pretty fresh soap, so if you're at all worried about burns, lye burns, like say you're like, well, what am I gonna do? Like, what if I, this touches? You can always wear gloves for this. I'm personally not, because I like kind of being able to feel a little bit more what I'm doing. And, but if you're worried about lye burns, just keep those gloves on. And remember, you know, in terms of safety, if you ever do touch raw soap like this, much of the saponification reaction has been completed already, which is great to know, but it can still give you lye burns. And what do lye burns feel like? Well, they're just a little bit itchy on your skin. They're a little bit, they make your skin red and they're pretty irritable, so you don't want them. So if you do get fresh soap on your hands at this point, just go ahead and rinse them in, the, in hot water and like a dish soap or a regular soap to get that lye, that kind of lye heavy or not totally cured soap right off as quickly as possible. And I'm with some of these just gonna do a little bit more in terms of how many little little stars I have going, make my celestial just look cute. 
and once this is done, you just go ahead and set these off to the side and they'll be ready to use or give away in four to six weeks because this is cold process soap. It does still require the same amount of cure time. You add just one more thing. If you do live in a pretty hot area, you're gonna to wanna to put these in the refrigerator because the heat's gonna cause your entire cupcake to kind of go poop because the heat will cause the soap almost to melt really a little bit. Just think about a regular frosting, right? Like a regular butter or cream cheese frosting. If you're in a hot area, it just goes whoop, which is why whenever I'm making a cake, for example, or frosting a cake, I will often put my, my cake in the actual refrigerator for that very reason. So these are all done and you guys, I made some earlier. I wanna show you how to get them out. And then uh, I hope you get really excited about this and try this on your own. These I made ahead of time and I think they turned out perfectly. You know, another thing I also wanted to mention is, ooh, wow, the silicone just releases so beautifully. I love this. Some people do cut these in half and actually then they end up with two kind of cylinders like that. And this makes a pretty good thing to try and like grasp onto in the shower if it's flat on the bottom. So that's another tip if you're like, well, those are really cute, but no one's gonna use them. Like I said, I use it. I think they're great. They totally work once you kind of work past your tip here. Um, or you could just cut these in half and use them just like that. You guys, thanks so much for joining me on today's episode. I really hope I get to see what you make. Remember, hashtag it Bramble on. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below. And of course, subscribe to our channel. That way you get notified every single time we have new videos out on, well, making everything for bath and body. Until next time, happy soaping.